and welcome to Just One More Watch. I'm not sure what the exact connection is. Perhaps it's because a lot of watch nerds are also science fiction nerds as well. But there's a real fascination within the community about watches that have been to space. Omega gets endless mileage from the fact that the Omega Speedmaster was indeed the first watch on the moon. Even the humble Bulova Lunar Pilot relaunched a few years ago due to its not quite so glamorous and not quite so official visit to the moon in the early 1970s. Well, they're not the only watches to have been there. There are a whole bunch of other watches that have been to space, many of them on the wrists of cosmonauts rather than astronauts on the other side of the Cold War. And I'm going to show you one such watch today, this one, the Gerlach Cosmonauta. This is a modern day version of a watch that the only Polish cosmonaut, the only Pole to have gone into space in that era, wore on his wrist on a mission in 1978. You may recognize this watch. It has featured on the channel before. I took it on holiday with me back in December last year. Holidays. Remember what those were? So all of you have already had a sneak preview of the Cosmonauta. Now, this watch was sent to me for free by Gerlach. I don't have to send it back. I talked about the Cosmonauta a few times on the channel and they got in touch with me and said, hey, would you like us to send you one? I said, are you kidding? Thank you very much. And it's a really interesting watch. It doesn't do an awful lot. The introduction is probably going to be the longest part of the video, but it's a real charmer if you're into space. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. So definitely a bit of a space oddity, this one. I reckon some of you are going to be all over this and some of you just won't quite understand why I find this one personally appealing. What I'll do, I'll leave a link in the description of the video to a worn and wound article from about four years ago that goes into some of the history behind this watch. Suffice to say that a, a Polish chap called Miroslav Hermanzewski uh, went to space on Soyuz 30, part of the, the Soyuz series of missions in June 1978. Here is a picture of Miroslav, he's the chap on the right and on his wrist you will see a decidedly 1970s looking digital watch. It was a Polish made Unitra Varel containing the latest, for the time, Sanyo LED module. Now the battery in the Unitra lasted about two weeks, which was not bad for Miroslav because his mission only lasted for about eight days. So I think he, he got back to Earth in one piece, landed on a Russian farm apparently. I'm sure his watch was still working. But he went on to become a national hero and I'm sure the watch on his wrist was the dream for many young Polish boys who dreamt of being cosmonauts and now they can buy it in the form of this Gerlach Cosmonauta. As you saw from the photos, pretty much sharing the looks of the original Unitra and sharing the LED module as well, though modernized, this one lasts for two years on a single battery. Modern materials as well in this one, we've got sapphire crystal covering that amazing 1970s red LED dial there. All stainless steel construction, 100 meters of water resistance, a much more modern, much more wearable watch, but not without its quirks. This isn't really going to be an everyday watch, I don't think, for a lot of people. But if you are into space, if you always dreamt of being an astronaut or a cosmonaut, I can see this one. Letting you live out those astronaut fantasies for a lot of guys and girls. So 40 millimeters in diameter, just under 11 and a half mil thick, 48 mil lug tip to lug tip. Now 20 mil hidden lugs, the bracelet flares out at 24, all the way down to 17 and a half, back up to 19 and a half at the clasp. Sized up for me, this one weighs in at a not inconsiderable 140 grams. So it is a bit of a novelty, this one, but it doesn't feel like a toy on your wrist. It still feels like a proper watch. So 316 cell stainless steel throughout, piece of sapphire crystal, as I mentioned. Screw on case back with a picture of a cosmonaut there. I'll show you that in just a second. The bracelet features solid links with push pins. Uh, it is only a press clasp, which is a little disappointing, and only two micro adjust holes. So you're going to have to take a decision of wearing this one either probably slightly loose or slightly tight. I wore it slightly loose. It is a comfortable watch to wear in operation though. The standard of finishing is nice throughout. A fairly pronounced vertical brush running the length of the midcase. It's a finer satinized brush on the bracelet. Back to the brush on the midcase, we've got the pusher at the one and a recessed adjustment pusher, the set pusher, if you will, at the 430. There is a bit of high polish on the two upper edges of the case there. Now, Gerlach logo etched into the bottom of the head of the watch. That is quite noticeable, it is quite sizable. In reality, though, I don't think it is overdone. 
So as I said, Gerlach have modernized the movement in this one, but it still doesn't do an awful lot. It's an LED 001GG in this with a stated battery life of two years, as mentioned from a CR2032. So one of the slightly larger batteries, you should have no problem swapping that out yourself when the time comes. Obviously that will depend on how often you press that top button there, the one and only button on the dial. So as you saw, standard time display here, press it again and you have got the month and the date press it for a third time and it pops into a ticking second and that is it. It really doesn't do an awful lot apart from that. If you want to adjust the watch, you can do so by first pressing the pusher up there at the one o'clock and then immediately after pressing the button down there at the four o'clock, the recess pusher. It cycles through first the hours. I'll, I'll set the hours and I'll show you why in just a second. Then it cycles to set the minutes, set the month, set the date and finally set the year. Then it brings into 12 or 24. Now if this was a Casio, I would always have all of my Casio set in 12 hour. Somehow this one, maybe it's the 1970s, maybe it's the space. I have this one set to 20 and I think it is utterly appropriate. That's it on wrist and as you can see it looks like a 1970s piece of jewellery this one. I've got a 7 inch wrist for your reference and it fits me just fine. Couple of things to note with this watch, you do need both hands to operate it so it is a conscious decision to tell the time. You can't just glance down at your watch and that's something you're going to have to get used to. Second thing is this LED, I'll pop up some LED footage, video footage of this one in my darkroom, i.e. my bathroom and as you can see at night it is fantastic. In bright sunlight it is next to hopeless so do bear that in mind as well. As I said this isn't going to be a practical everyday timepiece for most people it is going to be a bit of a novelty. You're going to have to be into the overall look and the story behind it to go for one of these. The nice big LED display though does mean this watch is perfectly legible even from a distance so long as you're not in bright sunlight as discussed. And here is the watch outside on my wrist fulfilling the duty that it does 99% of the time which is being a retro futuristic bracelet that you can't actually tell the time on. I had to hold the camera in one hand and the watch in the other so I can't press the button and show you what it looks like in natural light unfortunately. So not exactly practical then and in spite of the modern materials that LED module is going to win no prizes for accuracy. Stated tolerance is of plus to minus 60 seconds per month so one minute per month on this one as well. So as I said it's a bit of a novelty item this one but definitely a watch that I can see surviving in my collection for many many years. I dig the looks. I'm a child of the 70s as you saw from the t-shirt in the intro today. I didn't dream of being an astronaut when I was a young boy. I always dreamt of being a racing driver but I get this one. I get the appeal. At the current exchange rates these are around 280 US dollars so not particularly cheap and I would have loved to have seen a milled class for the money rather than a press class but like I said earlier on you already know whether you're into the Gerlach or not. I think there'll be just as many people watching today who get this watch as who don't get this watch. So there you have it, the Gerlach Cosmonauta, another left field option for you if you want the idea of wearing a space watch but don't like the idea of dropping five grand on an Omega Speedmaster. A real charmer this one, certainly unique, reeking of the 1970s, but you are gonna have to get used to the fact that it's a two-hand operation to tell the time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.